I can't stress this topic enough. It's so important. I'm going to do an entire episode on it. Um, But one of the most important things to me about setting up a voyaging sailboat is making sure that nothing, nothing is loose. All items when at sea need to be very well secured. Because should the yacht be knocked down or inverted or really just tossed around in a rough seaway, nothing should be able to get away and cause an unsafe situation. Even clutter on the boat or worse, like a really big mess, that can really create a dangerous situation. And the story that I want to tell you guys, or a story that comes to mind about this situation is uh, a friend of mine that was in the Queen's Birthday Storm. And you should Google the Queen's Birthday Storm. It was a storm that lived in infamy. It was uh, maybe 1991. And it was, there was a flotilla of, uh, of sailboats heading from New Zealand to Tonga. Uh, an enormous low pressure system came out of uh, the Indian Ocean and or I guess it's Pacific Ocean there, and swept across this flotilla, uh, 100, 100 foot seas, uh, 100 knot wind, 60 foot seas, and one family perished. But there were a lot of knockdowns, a lot of, um, uh, of inversions, and everybody, or almost everybody, abandoned their boats. But in my friend's situation, he was in... He was hand steering a West Sail 32. His companion was in the galley because you know they couldn't cook anything. She was opening a can of SpaghettiOs for my friend to eat. They couldn't cook anything. He was starving. You know he'd been out there hand steering for like 36 hours or something. And she took her hand off of the can of SpaghettiOs, or however it got loose. The boat was knocked down really hard and the can of SpaghettiOs flew across the salon and smashed open on the coach roof side. So think about that. A a can of SpaghettiOs flying around at whatever mile an hour a knockdown happens so hard that it flew across and smashed open on the coach roof side. Uh, had that smashed out a port light or worse smashed against the, her head, that would have made just a really, really dangerous situation out of what already was a very dangerous situation. So everything should be stowed securely. So to apply this exemplary story to the episode you're about to see. Uh, We're getting ready to install uh, our Nauta water tanks and the installation is going to be extremely comprehensive, super solid, and uh, they won't be able to move around at all, which is the whole point of this thing because these, these water tanks have no baffles in them So they would be able to move if they weren't very securely installed. And I go into that in the video, so you'll be able to see that. So please subscribe and leave a comment because I'd like to hear what everybody thinks about the installation. And uh, like and share if you dig it. Uh, If you're getting something out of it, that'd be really great. Thanks a lot. Here comes the vid. All right, so maybe you guys have seen some of the vids, some of the shorts that we did on um, building bulkheads for installing our Nauta water bladders, N-A-U-T-A. They were on the boat in the Settees port and starboard, and we were cleaning out and found them down in there, and we had already gotten rid of our water tanks that were down here in the bilge, you know, from the factory, old fiberglass water tanks. They were just nasty. So we decided to install these Nauta water bladders. Um, they're, they're real high quality. 
made in France and they the inner the inner compartment of them is lined with uh, what they call Tedlar, T-E-D-L-A-R, which is um, a surface that prevents um, water, uh, a taste, taste getting into the water from the hard rubber that these things are. Uh, so I've got a couple of the bulkheads made. You can see them here. Made some templates and fit them into where they're going to go. And then they're going to get glassed in. There'll be a floor in them. And then the tanks will sit on that floor. And then there'll be a top over them as well to secure them in place. And they have these Kringles in them. And I'm going to make some blocks of wood that also bolt through these Kringles. So these guys really can't move around. Um, don't want things moving around when you get in the seaway. So that's basically what we're going to be doing. And I'm just going to finish up uh, uh, shaping this last uh, bulkhead, this most aft bulkhead right here. Because I made it, but I haven't fit it into the curve of the hull. So that's what I'm going to do today, and then uh, we've been trying to get uh, epoxy down here in Mexico, and we did finally found find some, and we go to and they're closed. Saturday they're closed. They're always open. We came down last week. We missed it because we got down too late in the afternoon. Yesterday we got down here on time, well on time, and they were closed for inventory. And the other both marine stores that had the 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 right epoxy were closed, so. I don't know. Sometimes it's a little hard to make things happen down here in Mexico, but the payoff is really well worth it. That's great. Done. That's it, man. How long did that take? 10 minutes? Probably. 10 minutes to scribe that in there. I mean, I cut it out at home. <laughs> you know, I made a template, took it home to the shop at home, just cut it out table saw and with the jigsaw rough and then scribed it in there's a bunch of build up of fiberglass here this was added on later this bulkhead looks like it was added on later I guess just in the construction of the whole floor system in the boat it was added on all this fiberglass here so it's considerably higher than the initial layup which is this this is the initial layup of the boat right here of the hull all this stuff and then this bulkhead and all of this was all built as the interior of the boat. And on these Creelocks, um, the interiors are built in place. All the furniture is built in place. In the Pacific Sea Crafts, in the Pacific Sea Crafts, the, all the furniture is um, is a liner that gets dropped into the boat which can be really beautiful and very easy to keep clean uh, some things aren't as serviceable because they're underneath the liner that gets dropped in so if you imagine the way this hull is right here basically they build another liner that's that's gel coated you know really smooth and beautiful and they drop it right in so you can't you don't a actually see the hull of the boat um, or where a lot of things are that you might want to get to um, 
the upshot of that is everything's really clean. So, you know, we're working with a, however old our boat is, uh, it's a 25, 20, it's a 1977, so it's 23, and another 24, so it's 57 years old, this boat is almost as old as me. And, uh, I'm sorry, 47 years old. Um, so, I probably shouldn't do math on the camera. So, anyway, we got it fit, fitted in there and fit in there. And cool, the next step is finding some fiberglass, man. Some some resin and some, some epoxy and some fiberglass cloth. Um, so that's it. We're, we're, we'll move on and we'll shoot the rest of that install of these nautobladders. All right.